Hi everyone, Emma here. So I'm so excited to do a bracelet with these lovely anchor clasps that I got from BB Craft. So this is a collaboration with them. And this case, I, I want to clarify because in the unboxing it wasn't quite clear. I was a bit confused about the amount that was in this box. So it comes in this plastic container and it has four different colors. It has the silver and that's about the size of them. Let me enlarge this a bit so you can really get a good look. So these are really beautiful. They're lovely. I love the size. Let me adjust this here. There. So um, yeah, and the way these work is you create a loop with your leather and it, they sit in like that and then you bring your leather around through here, bring your leather around the loop and, um, you know, tie it off, whether you glue it, whether you um, use Eslon, whatever, but I'm going to show you one of the ways to do it with these type of clasps. So this is the silver. And then there's an antique gold. It's really, they're really nice. The quality is awesome. And uh, then there is a copper. And the copper are really beautiful. There's some just some slight patina on it to make it look really uh, kind of antique-y looking. So it's pretty cool. And then they're gold is really nice and shiny too so these are amazing I was really impressed so let's talk there's 30 pieces of each color and there's four different colors that's like 120 pieces with the box for $15 US that's pretty incredible you would not have to buy any more class to make you could do like for a um uh, like a, a bazaar or a sale or in your Etsy shop, you could create 120 bracelets to stick in your store and sell and super cheap. So you don't have to worry about, you know, increasing your price too much. So this is really cool. So I just want to let you know, um, if you haven't seen it, take a look at the unboxing that I did of these and two other types of class. So I mentioned that because I'm sure if you see this, you're going to get excited and want to, to order it. But I would definitely take a look at the unboxing because the the two other types of clasps are amazing as well. And the one in particular that I want to point out is the final one. It's a large clasp. Let me uh, just give you, give you a quick peek here because I have since, I have ordered some of these from a different seller on AliExpress and I paid I think about five dollars each for them and these are only two dollars from uh, BB Craft so they are a set of uh, I think it's a set of ten for twenty dollars so that makes it two dollars each and just so you know I'm just looking at the BB craft site right now and at the top it says free shipping for orders over twenty five dollars so definitely this is fifteen dollars and if you add you know another ten dollars to your cart you get free shipping so that is a steel. So these here, and I want to clarify, these are stainless steel. So I'll be showing you a tutorial on what to do with these guys too. So you can make some really gorgeous bracelets for your husband or your brothers. So these or to sell. Like these are amazing. So let's take a look at what we have for this and what you're going to need. So you're going to need some leather and let me just, um, we'll just slide this out of the frame a bit and look at this. So you see the holes here are quite big, which is really good because you can put whatever size leather you want in there. So I have some three millimeter leather. Now, most people don't have this on hand. You most likely have a two millimeter, which is this here red one or you have like a 1.5 or a 1. So this one here is the 3. If you happen to 
picks them up of the three. So you see it fits quite well with the three, but there is still some space. So you could actually um, go up to a four or five on this. I, I think easily you could go to a four and squeeze in a five in there. Now, what you're going to run into, because you do have to bend these like this and, you know, secure them here, um, the thicker leather starts to get a little difficult to roll over. So I think actually the three is the best um, to fit the entire hole. But we are going to do it with the two millimeter leather. And I'm going to show you how to do that because you see with the two millimeter, that's way too small. So to start with, I'm going to make this to my wrist size. So my wrist size is a um, six and a quarter, six and three quarters. So just under seven inches. So if you're seven inches, just add an inch to your cord. And when you're, when I show you the process, there's a point where you're going to test it on your wrist to make sure that it fits. Just remember your clasp is, um, let me see what it says here on the, length is 23 millimeters, so 2.3 centimeters. Let me just, that, I'll give you that in inches here. That's about an inch, just short of an inch, like that. So just remember to incorporate that into your length. So subtract it from your cord length, okay? Um, and to do your measurements while we're on the topic, also remember that this area here that you're going to loop, depending on the size loop that you want. This is probably enough. So when you turn this, you should be able to get that out. So I would leave the space like that. You could make it tighter, but um, you know, you'll be fiddling with it on your wrist. So just an idea there. So remember to incorporate this. This is, let me see, it's probably an inch total. No, about an inch and a half. So I'll give you the measurements for my wrist that's almost seven inches. So we are going to do two strands of this. We're going to fold them over, which will make four strands. So let's, this is the leather I have. This lovely red leather. Oh, I love it. Every bracelet that I make with this, people go nuts over and... Uh, they sell right away. So let's see, what did I say for mine? Um, two strands of 16 inches is what you're going to need for my size. So let me get my ruler out. Of course the ruler goes to 12, so I'm just going to measure out. Just show you here. Measure out 12 and four and then I am going to double back and like cut another piece and I'll use this as my measurement so I like to use my nippers for that but if you don't have any of these just use your scissors that's fine I just find it cuts a really nice nice uh, edge on there and oh there's a knot in here let's get that out okay so we'll measure this from the piece that I already cut, like that, and I think I slipped it a bit. This is not like super essential because I do believe the allowances I'm giving you for the uh, fold over and the clasp are generous. So, and I like to be generous with my leather. It's so annoying you get to the end of your bracelet and you don't have enough cord to finish it. So. <laughs> <laughs> just trust me it's worth the extra couple of pennies you're going to spend on leather yeah we don't want anybody freaking out so let's slide these guys away because we're going to use this lovely one and the other thing you're going to need 
is your Eslon cord. This is for this design. Um, you can do this with other stuff and I will be making other videos for that. So definitely hang in there. Um, now you don't need any of these beads to put on your bracelet, but at the middle section, I like to put something as an embellishment. And I thought, so we're going to take the two strands, you're going to fold them over and this is going to be your your class part and we're going to put some eslon here to hold it together and then in the midpoint we are going to put these beads and let me show you what that looks like we're going to try we'll see how far we get with this we're going to go like that and one here and one there now I think I have done one with one of these with just that itself and the Eslon turned out super nice, but I think I want to just really get it to pop. So we'll put those in. I'll show you how to do that. So let's start. Let's take our two pieces of strand. This is going to need a bit of hand dexterity. If you have some like clips you can use, you can use those as well to hold things together. So you want to kind of get these flush but take just bring your strands I'm gonna lay them flat I'm hoping that they will keep that position and that's another reason to put something in the middle is to hold that position otherwise your strands will open up not a big deal if you want it to look like a multi-strand bracelet I just so you can see that my measurements a bit off so I am gonna put one inside the other so let's turn this one out this way the position this one here there so, so they may be a bit off on the bottom part so let's start with the clasp that will kind of set things up so we've got the midpoint. The other thing with this, because there's two pieces, you could put some Eslon here and the side to hold it together. Um, we'll see how it goes. If, if it looks like it's like too flippy floppy, we might, but this leather is really stiff. So we definitely don't need that much. So we're gonna bring that down some more. And that's still a bit much, but we're gonna I might use my um, let me see if I have one handy here a gator clip let me grab it so I saw a really Cool trick for using these gator clamps because they are a bit um, they're not scratchy or anything but they are a bit stiff and they might scuff up your leather a bit so um, what they had was they had put a strip of leather or even a piece of old bead mat like actually I used to have one on my desk and then attach like this so there that's not going anywhere so let's test this first before we get that in place that might help you to be able to handle it a little better i think and what you can do is squeeze this first it will pop back into shape but at least it's bending a little better and I'm being really particular, but you don't have to. This is there. Okay. So here's where I'm measuring, but once this closes, it will tighten it a bit. Yeah, well, let's go down a bit. So then when we tighten that. So let's um gonna go down just a tick and I'm gonna mark this okay. 
it's a little bit hard to see on the red leather but that'll be good because then you won't notice it now we're going to cover that with the um with the eslon and for picking your eslon you can pick any color what i did was let me grab that so then now you're you know you can let go it's not a big deal I picked, I tried to match it with this patina color. So I think that'll be really good. I would grab about an arm's width of Eslon and cut that. Now what you're going to do with this Eslon is you're going to fold over a piece at the beginning. Let me I put a big tail on it. You don't really need that big a tail. Let me switch that up. Really, all you need is the length of tail that you're, um, here, let me do it this way, that you're wrapping and uh, like a little bit more because you're going to need this to pull through. So you're creating a loop. That loop is where you're going to put your, um, your, loose strand and then pull it tight and that will go back the other way so let's go grab these guys and put the loop down let's see if we can get that in there you could actually put your loop in the clamp too i'm just gonna try and hold on to it and then just take my tail and push it over here it's not a big deal you're gonna get to it so now you're gonna start to weave and wrap everything actually we're gonna wrap a little bit down because we're gonna go to the other way so we're gonna start I think I want it about this from here to here so, because this part here is kind of structural, so you do want it to be nice and strong. So I'm going to start here. Here, let's go this way. So actually, I'm going to just press my fingers down here. And... So you see it gets a bit fiddly, but just be patient and do your best to hang on to everything. So for this part here, I am going to get everything lined up, the threads. So each time I wrap it, I want it to sit next to the one I just wrapped like that. Now you could make this, you can see it wants to fold into a circle. You could fold it into a circle, but I kind of want to try and keep it flat. We'll see how that works out. Could be wishful thinking on my part. That. And keep going till you get to that pen mark. And I've got to untangle this here. There we go. Like that. And I'm going to switch fingers so I see where the pen mark is. And that way it won't get tangled in the pieces of leather. Let's pop that over. There we go. You can use thicker Eslon. Um, I don't know what this one thickness is. And it, keep pushing it down too. Let me enlarge this for you. Keep pushing it down and keep it tight and you could do something like this and just keep going and then you get a few strands over hang on to it and push it down again and flatten that tight I gotta switch hands <laughs> I'm surprised that pinching these things, I'm not pinching very hard, is actually hurting my thumbs. I had thumb surgery last summer, so 
That's amazing. They, um, the surgeon didn't want to do it, the surgery initially because he said, we don't usually do it on somebody so young because they use, they lose, um, thumb strength. And I was like, nah, I'll be fine. <laughs> so, so I'm kind of surprised that pinching is actually what bothers me. So there you go. You don't have to do that much, but I actually, I think it looks awesome. Okay, so this is the spot where we are going to put the end. So I have a ton of Eslon left. I didn't need that much. Just put it through the loop. This is the important part. This is going to tie everything. There's my piece. Put it through the loop. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Bring it all the way through like this. Okay. Now... Just hang on to that and grab your other piece and you're going to pull it and that's going to bring this down. So as we pull that, just, so you see it's pulling it down, it's going to pull that loop in. So now I'm just going to, I'll clip it to about here. Actually, I won't clip it yet. I'll wait. Yeah, I'm going to clip it now. The reason being is I don't want to get my scissors too close to this because I might cut it. So let's, let's cut about there. That should be enough. And just be careful when you're pulling it through. Not to go too far because you will... This loop that you're pulling on will come off of that strand. So it's just there hidden and we'll see when we open this clamp up there's the pen marks so I might you know kind of squeeze this further up but I think you can't really see it and it most likely will wear off so now you can clip this thread you don't need this one and clip this one as close as you can without cutting your there that worked just kind of flatten that so that is the first part we can take that off you see how it kind of it just bent it a bit but it seems to be fine so that looks awesome that's that's secure that's not going anywhere now um i'm just checking let me grab my gs hypo i will show you you can add a bit of glue to that It must be on my desk. I know I try and keep the glue handy, but I'm always reorganizing my office. Do you know what I think? I think it's in a project tray. So I will just let you know. The GS Hypo is great. It has a fine needle on the end, so you can stick it. I would probably go to the back stick it through there and just add a drop or two you can do it to the other side but you can see this is not going anywhere so there is our first part and let's just test our clasp so lots of room for the clasp this is going to look amazing and honestly i don't think you need to add some eslon here you could if you wanted to but no no need so this is what it looks like on the end and when you're doing this, be sure you get the orientation correct because there is two sides to this clasp. So there's a rounded side here and there's a concave side there. So you probably want it to sit this way rather than that way. Um, so take your clasp, put it on there and then bring these guys around. And you're going to go in from the top like this, take two strands, and you're going to fold. Now, this is where you're going to want to do the measurement. I measured an inch to fold over. 
this is less than an inch. This is looking like it's the right size for me, but let me test that. You know, I still have a weird sense of how big things are when it comes to my wrists. So yeah, I probably could fold it over. Let's take a look here. I don't want it super tight. So yeah, I could fold easily an inch on that. So that will give me more space like here to um, to uh, do the Eslon. And I'm just, I paused for a second there because I want to, I'm trying to decide whether we should do the clasp first. I think we should, because I'll tell you what, this is going to be rounded here and like, maybe the middle strands will um, be shorter so you want to you don't want to do this sitting flat because you see how they pop out so you kind of want it rounded so let's do the let's do the clasp and you can see they're all we could actually cut it right now so just take your finger and you know hold that one side and then draw it to get so they're kind of close, but let's make sure they are the same length so that we have an idea of the position. So like I said, we have lots of space with this. You're not going to see the fold over part, but unless you want to. So you can leave it exposed a bit. Let's get rid of those pieces and so again, our clasp is going to sit this way, and so it's going to go up top here, two strands in each. So this is the really exciting part about this, because if you look, so let's just look with my ruler, make sure I'm correct with my inch measurement. Yeah. All right. Pull that out a bit. But so I'm going to bend it. Once I bend it, then I have an idea where the position is. So you can see two strands of two millimeter fits. So the measurements on their site for this class does say four millimeters. So uh, it says whole size. So that's the important part of buying these kind of things is to see where the, the, uh, the size of the hole. So yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, you know, I'm going to try and uh, use the clamp for this. I don't know if I'll be able to... The, the clasp might be in the way. <laughs> Maybe this way? I don't know if that really works. Oh well, no big. We know where the bend is. So, um, I'm wondering if this will be... We better take a full length, just to be sure. I took a full length in a bit. So you can put some embellishment in this section too. So let's fold it over, like we said. And squeeze that. And just like that. Okay. So there's your tail. Let me enlarge this a bit. And this is your long piece. So let's see if we can get these guys. And you can pre bend your leather. I um I'm just looking at this. There is a space here. I don't want this loop to be left in that space because I feel it will give it some space to move and maybe come undone. So I am going to set my thread in between the two strands. Doesn't matter which one. And it doesn't really matter um that you're doing it this way because it's 
you're not going to see that part, but at least you know that it is going to be snug in there. So now let's get her strands all scorched together. Hold it with your thumb. And there's your end strands. So let's, let's go all the way around here. And I'm going to hold a little further down because I want, I think what we'll do, there's quite a bit there. There's like an inch of leather. We might go in and cut these or at least cut them so that they're the same. Like, now I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I think I'm going to go and work my way up this way. Apologize, it'll get clearer in a second here. As soon as I get a few strands of this, then we can then I can move my finger. So you can use your other fingers to grab hold, but you can also get somebody to help you. Uh, let me get these in position here. I'm going to just go over these two, few strands. It will make it a bit bulky on that side, but I want to make sure these guys don't move. And you can double it as well and make it bulkier. So This is the really exciting part about this design is you can do a lot of different things with it. I'm gonna switch, come around one more time and bring my end through my S line like we did on the last one. Okay, and let's grab the loose thread on the other side, and that's gonna pull this guy down. Just get that tight and pull it down there. So you can kind of see where it's at, it starts to bulk a little bit. So let's uh, enlarge this so you can really see. So. Now, before I go any further, you can see that the different pieces of leather are kind of sticking up. So you can take your leather and pull it down. And this is the second strand here. And pull that down. So now it's nice and even, looks pretty. So continue to pull your loose cord at the bottom down till this kind of loop comes to the, say the midpoint. And you can see it's snug. I'm, I'm pulling hard. So. There, it's not moving anymore. So that's good. I'm glad we put it in the, the middle and I'm just squeezing to get it flat. These are a bit loose. Not too happy about that. Let me see if this does anything. There. Okay. So now we can cut this as close as you can to the piece. And I'm just going to tug this a little and it'll I don't know if I'll have any more space to do it, but we'll try. Just tug it in to hide that. There, it's gone. So now cut this one. I think maybe these are a bit loose because these strands are... That's where we doubled up. So they want to sit flat. Let me see if I can just adjust these. If not, just squeeze them up a bit. And um, we will just cut this to make it straight and clip this one there. Okay. 
So I'm just bending my thing. So this is, so you could essentially be done at this point. That is really pretty. And you could use this as the front of your bracelet or have something like that. But we are going to put something here. So, and again, you can add some glue into that s -lon. So let's just fold this over and we're going to take the shortest strand and we're going to cut the others to the same length. So I might do them one at a time just to keep it nice. We'll do two here. There. And if you're concerned about the white, you can take a marker, the color of your leather, and mark it up and it will but I don't think it's necessary. So now we are going to put our beads on. So this point here, you want to find your midpoint of your bracelet. And remember, this is how it's going to sit. So if you want this side to be on your wrist, just take a look at the direct opposite. And it seems to be at the midpoint, a little over from this side. So I think we'll just work, work it as it is. And so you can see these are very, I would just leave it bent. So Eslon, again, another arm's length. And let me think about this one. So for this one, because we're adding some meat beads to the middle, I think the best way to do this, um, in the past, I've done it just with one bead, so it's not as important. You can do it one strand the way you do this one. But I think for this, because we have three beads, I want to do two separate ones on each side of the beads. So that also means that we need to put the beads on first and then we'll do our big strand around. So I'm going to take one of my shorter pieces, which was actually pretty long. And we'll start with the middle bead and just string it on. So if you're having trouble getting it through your bead, you can always just put some nail polish on the end here to create like a point. There, I managed to get it. So I'm going to take this down to the middle of my strand. Like that. And you can put a knot on each side to keep it in place. Actually, I think I might do that. If we don't like it, we can take it out. So just put a knot. that. Yeah, you barely even see it. So let's do the knot on the other side. Now for this side, the other side didn't matter as much. We could just move our strand. But for this side, because you want your knot to be right up against the bead, my trick is to grab hold of it like that and then pull your knot. And Hold that piece down with your nail or something finer, a needle, and just pull it down. And there's a little bit of space. Okay, so now let's take a look what we have here. It's our midpoint. So I'm just going to do basically the same thing. I'm going to hang on to this and wrap okay i'm just going to hang on to that now i'm going to wrap the other one in the opposite direction grab hold These are going to be covered so it's not that like the strands. 
so it's not that essential and they might be behind the bead as well let me just get a few wraps and we'll straighten this out a bit because it looks a bit messy okay so get those there let's move that and let's take a look at what we have here so let's straighten this bead out to the midpoint hold that down and pull everything tight and flatten that out. There we go. Let me see if I can get this one a little tighter on this strand here. Why the strands Let's get that one tight. Figure out why this one is jamming a bit here. There we go. Pull and pull. Now we're just gonna take these two and tie a knot to hold them together for now. So that guys in and do a nice knot to secure that this is the second knot just holding the knot with my finger there okay so it looks messy don't worry, we're going to go over that and you won't see it anyway, but there you go. It's, it's, it's pretty good. The, I think the two side beads will secure it a bit. So now let's put our two side beads on. Just grab your strand on one side, pop it through the hole. And this is going to go to the front. And what you can do to secure this piece here is you can bring your strand through it like this. Here, let me, it's a bit backwards here, but through this strand here. There. Just for your first one, you don't have to do it for all of them, although you can. Let me kind of position that there. That's where I want it. So you could essentially go through it a second time. Um, it does look a bit, a bit tight. Let's see. Let me see. It, it's not essential it's this Eflon is really good it's not gonna do anything so that's that one there so we'll leave that one let me clip this one These are hard to maneuver with my hands. They're super strong. 
kind of got it just on the tip there okay so let's get this one on and you don't have to do like a whole bunch of wraps like I did you could actually just tie one single knot just so that it's on there because we're going to go around this stuff with the Eslon cord the other strand so now I'm, I'm taking I'm doing the same as I did with that where I cross over through here and that just gives it a little um, security and we'll just wrap it around a few times So now you want to tie this off and it looks like there's a nice strand there. We can tie it off. Um, actually, I think, I think what I might do is put it through that piece here and then tie it off with the other strand. So let's get it through there like that. And we can take this one off. Nice and snug. And take this one, put it through the strand as well, and we'll tie it on the opposite so that it crosses over the strand like that. Tie a knot. And tight um you could do a second strand i kind of hesitate because you're going to start to bulk this area up and you, this is going to be on your skin so i would just leave it and what we'll do is we'll just cut it to about here and the other eslon wrap that we're going to do will go over those guys and secure it and then you can also add some glue so just clip like that should be fine and actually you know you could this could be the end of your bracelet like that so there's a few points in this where you can say okay I'm done this looks great so but let's let's uh, like really polish it up here so we're going to take our strand, we're going to do the same thing, we're going to create a loop. So we're going to do this one at the back so that we can access the loop again and we're going to go straight across everything. It should work. <laughs> Cross my fingers, it should work. That's how I did the last few, so let's see. So let's just... I put a big loop this time. I want to make sure because I, I think we'll only go a couple of strands past the beads. But uh, see how that turns out. So then this one. Let me put a little more length on that. So let's hang on to here. So like that. want to hang on to everything together there we go okay that's one tight there if you're really particular which I usually am and I'll show you <laughs> I'm actually going to count how many loops I go past the bead ah, I want this flat there It's, um, like I said, it wants to roll, so just be careful you're not doing it too tight. There. Three. 
likes to tack on. I think I'm going to switch fingers. It might be easier. Four. Five. That's four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. So I think eight will do it on the each side. Eight. I'm just contemplating doing a ninth one just to secure that thread. Do a ninth. Move my scissors here. Get in the way. Okay, nine. Now go around the bead in between the flat bead and do a few. These ones are not as essential. It's going to cover the mess in the back here. So you don't really have to count these ones. Go around bead. I'm going to go to the other side here. So I'm trying to get this flat behind the bead and it's just a little finicky here. To get this nice and neat. Move that in a bit. There. Now we're going to go around the bead. My finger's getting stiff here. This one got really loose. Let's see if we can. One, two, three. I feel like Lawrence Welk. A one and a two. <laughs> I'm just tell him my, uh, there's four, my age. <laughs> Young people are going, who's Lawrence Welk? Five, six, seven, eight. We're going to flatten this and we're going to move these guys over. Flatten. Yeah, I am uh, struggling with my thumbs here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, and eight, and let's flatten that a bit. There. Now bring your cord through the loop. Around the get this nice and neat here. 
around the back, okay, like this, and on to that. And there's your strand on the other side. It's still really messy. I would definitely clean that up a little better. Hang on to this. So you can see the loop is in. And this also tightens everything. You can see it's getting rounded. So before you really cinch it down, take your strands and try and get them nice and flat. There. And I'm just going to pull on both sides and that's going to tighten both sides. So you see these here are actually tightening as I'm pulling on this one. So, because that was the first strand and it's wanting to, it's bunching them up. So just get to a certain point and then adjust them a bit. And that should be enough. Let me pull this one down a bit. There. Okay, so now we just cut these off, add a bit of glue, and you are set to go. So now these guys are a bit loose because you can see it's bunched up a bit. So I actually think the better... Um, situation was with just the attaching the beads but you know you you got to try different things so let me get this in the position I want see if we can you can go in there with some thread and actually just tighten these beads a little but you know what you might want it loose like that. So, and I think you could probably pull these. I'm just going to pull the threads out a bit. There. So, let's try this on. So, this is it gives you an idea too of how easy it is to get on because I have issues with my hands. So, um, good to know because there's no point getting a bracelet that you can't put on unless you have somebody to help you and this is um, this is pretty easy considering and you can see yeah you might want to secure these a little they're a little, they're a little flippy floppy, but I would use some um, some beading thread to secure those because the uh, the eslon will probably not go through. But there you go, that is awesome. That turned out really good. So thank you so much to BB Craft for this amazing collaboration. I um, really like the. Uh, stuff that they sent me this is getting loose so yeah I would definitely glue this and I think it's only getting loose because I want it to lay flat and now it's actually bunching up so I would definitely do better if it was um let me see if I can slide that up a bit there we go yeah definitely glue these so there you go there's a lovely class i hope you enjoyed that and stay tuned we're going to do a whole bunch more of these lovely bracelets take care everybody see you in the next video oh by the way i should mention coupon code so i'm going to leave the links in the description for these items 
and also um, you can use the coupon code Emma5 and I'll put the coupon code in the description as well for $5 off a $40 order and remember it's um, orders over $25 free shipping so definitely worth checking out and if you are a youtuber and you're interested in doing collaborations definitely they have a program and I'll leave the information in there about their program for youtubers if you have a hundred subscribers or more you can participate in their um, collaboration program and get free stuff so that's fun. <laughs> Take care, everybody. See you in the next video. Bye.